So our last speaker for today broadcasting from Paris is Nathalie Bondil. She's the director of museum and exhibitions at the Institut du Monde Arabe. And her talk is entitled Museotherapy for a museum that does good. Nathalie, hello. Yes, hello. Could you see me? Yes. Perfect. So I will be brief because I'm sure that you are very tired after such a long day. But uh, thank you very for your invitation. I regret very much not to be with you, but uh, I will take the opportunity to have this moment uh, for uh, uh, about museotherapy, which uh, is a concept uh, I. Uh, uh, I had imagined uh, in uh, 2016, and so uh, you, I will present to you donc, uh, the principle uh, on which uh, this uh, concept is based. Uh, first of all, because I am an art historian, I'm not a doctor, uh, the principle was to rethink uh, the biological and experiential visitor, our public, our audiences who uh, visit our museum. The relation we have uh, with uh, the images uh, uh, change uh, during uh, those last centuries. Uh, living, uh, living the images otherwise with all the senses was really something uh, much more understood in the previous centuries uh, because uh, we had a more sensory sensitive relationship with the image with the art and it has been replaced by a spiritual relationship with the image we admire in museums our being is above all spiritual which distinguishes it from animals so we have to renew our physical relationship to the image thanks to the uh, biochemistry don't we understand that uh, image engage all uh, our senses. And here I just want to show to you uh, an example of a recent book who talks about iconophagy, people who eat images, and it's true that, for example, in Syria, uh, there was those coins, or those little pills or medicine which were, were made thanks to uh, the land where a holy saint, uh, Simeon le Stylite, who was living. And then, so you can see that eating the image with the figure of uh, this uh, holy person uh, was supposed to um, care uh, the uh, people who was eaten it. Um, our relation to uh, the um, more physical relation with art is also linked to the fact that uh, now we are not dividing our rational person, our rational thinking versus uh, our emotional thinking. Uh, I think that for coming from the Cartesian, from Descartes philosophy, I think so I am. Now we did evolve uh, through a Darwinian uh, philosophy concept where it is, I feel, so I am. The animal that is us is all about the Darwinian revolution. And uh, of course, thanks to uh, those previous uh, extraordinary and revolutionary uh, concept. Donc, uh, we uh, rethink our relation to with uh, our uh, cousins, if uh, I may, uh, who are donc, the big monkeys and the studies of those animals uh, are rather recent. I just want to pay tribute to women in primatology uh, because, uh, in fact, uh, women, uh, they were talked sometimes, uh, they were called leaky girls, uh, were very, very innovative in the way how they were uh, connecting with uh, uh, gorillas or uh, chimpanzees, etc. You can recognize here uh, Jane Goodall or um, Diane Fossey. And because um, they had a different uh, connection, a different relation, not in terms of power, uh, uh, but in terms of empathy with uh, those animals, uh, primatology uh, was uh, uh, did uh, uh, many many improvements. 
Uh, art and health does not belong only to our human being uh, dimension. The art and health uh, is also connected in the animal life. For example, if you read Jared Diamond, The Third Chimpanzee, a great book I would recommend, uh, it is said that our need for beauty or aesthetic emotion is physiological, not just philosophical or cultural. So here you have an example of a cradle birds of New Guinea and Australia who are absolutely um, amazing because they built uh, those kind of architecture uh, they are, uh, because they want to invite uh, the uh, female uh, in this kind of loggia in front of uh, which uh, the male uh, dance and uh, do uh, does his parade. So so uh, he also uh, try to find uh, some um, elements, uh, very colorful elements, in order to uh, make uh, this uh, installation more beautiful. And in the animal uh, dimension, uh, beauty is linked to uh, health because it is connected, uh, connected to our uh, need of uh, reproduction and it is linked in a reptilian or a part of our brain. So uh, this whole um, uh, quick uh, survey about this Darwinian revolution um, make that we uh, now rethink our status of humans versus animals. And this is exactly what we can see here. On one side, you have this uh, beautiful, uh, idealistic uh, marble sculpture of the very first artist uh, following a 19th century artist in front of uh, this uh, very impressive uh, paleo artist, paleo sculpture, Lucy Selfie, donc by Elizabeth Daines. She is a paleo uh, artist. She works for uh, natural history museums and where donc, uh, uh, she wants to uh, show our emotional uh, behavior and the way how donc, our brain is a servant of the body. I'm quoting uh, Antonio Damasio, the famous neurologist. Uh, there are also uh, different factors which explain that uh, the contact we have with uh, um, art and especially thanks to the aesthetic emotion, we are not talking about beauty, about what is beautiful, but about what is we feel. Uh, it is beautiful. It is, uh, of course, a completely subjective definition of beauty. And there is this activation of mirror neurons, uh, which uh, were found thanks to an Italian researcher, Giacomo Rizzolatti. Uh, he had this original concept of mirror neurons, the brains of the great apes use certain groups of cells to feel an emotion such as suffering, etc. So it is all about empathy and the way how donc, uh, those neurons activated our brain. Donc when we feel, when we have this empathy, it could be a positive or negative empathy donc, in front of someone in, or in front of a work of art. There is another um, uh, important dimension of uh, this, uh, the, our brain, which is not just uh, rational, as you understood, uh, our brain is also conditioned by our memory. Donc, he's an incredible storyteller. Our brain is, in fact, uh, destined, dedicated to, for our serve, uh, to for our survival. So, he, donc, our brain is always imagining a different uh, scenario. And when you see uh, donc, this image, uh, maybe you can't understand exactly at first see uh, first sight what it is and now if I tell you that uh, uh, it is in fact an optic uh, optical uh, photography which represents a dog uh, you can see donc, a spotted dog okay, and which is uh, from uh, his uh, bottom and now for those who can see this image you can't see this image without seeing this uh, dog. In fact, it is just impossible because we give meaning to what we see, we lend intentions to images and to works of art. So memory is also important in terms of cognition bias. 
following Dr. Pierre Le Marquis, another uh, neurologist with whom I work, and he uh, wrote uh, a very interesting book which has not been translated uh, yet in English, The Art Who uh, Cares, Who Cures. Uh, he says art caresses the brain, so art allows us to, curb, to sculpt our brain. It modifies its functioning and activates the pleasure and reward circuits. So the brain takes two seconds to refuse a work of art that we are not interested in. It takes four seconds to be attracted, to be interested by a work of art that resembles us consciously or unconsciously. So we interact. The brain behaves as if it was, it was facing a biological entity secreting positive endogenous substances. And this is very interesting because all those then uh, endogenous uh, hormones are dopamine, morphine, adrenaline, cortisol, oxytocin, serotonin. So uh, this aesthetic emotion we uh, have like, in front of a work of art we like can um, um, uh, has these uh, direct uh, consequences as we uh, can uh, have this secretion of natural medicine, if I can say. So the point of this first uh, part of my short lecture is that we do have to reconcil uh, reconciliate our two cultures. So I just want to mention to Charles Percy Snow, who in uh, 1959, he's a very famous novelist and scientist who denounced in a famous conference about the two cultures that look, we separate too much uh, in our Western intellectual life, sciences and humanities. Donc, the French philosopher Edgar Morin also say man is 100% biological and 100% cultural. So this interdisciplinarity is absolutely essential. Working with the scientists is essential for this notion of museotherapy, the museum who can uh, care and cures. So second uh, part uh, will be about uh, from care to cure the new cultural and museum practices. Here I refer to the very last definition of uh, a museum which has been voted at the last International Council of Museums Assembly last August 22 and I uh, underline in uh, yellow uh, the new word inclusive, diversity, sustainability, experiences, communities. So all those uh, uh, new notions uh, are very uh, relevant when uh, we want to support this idea of a caring museum, even a museum who uh, can cure. In the 20th century, uh, 21st century, culture will be to health what sport was to the 20th century. This is really my belief on, uh, uh, because uh, one century ago, it was not at all obvious for people that art could, uh, that uh, sport could be good for our health. In fact, there were uh, many controversy. And now, uh, uh, one century after, everybody is uh, absolutely uh, convinced by the fact that uh, uh, doing some sport is good for our health. And I would say that uh, this uh, notion uh, is even more important uh, right now about um, the importance of uh, the aesthetic emotion, because first, and we are in a post-pandemic uh, period uh, where the public health and individual health uh, are becoming more and more important. Then we are always in front of screen. And in fact, if you think about the word, what is a screen? A screen is also so a wall. And then don't we know, thanks to many kinds of uh, therapies uh, with art, that uh, art can help us to communicate in other ways uh, things we cannot uh, uh, talk about. Uh, when we could not find any words, don't we can draw, we can uh, uh, express don't, uh, those trauma, don't, those needs. Museotherapy is all about that. Of course, there are many therapies in art or art therapies, drama therapy, etc. 
behavioral therapy is really include all those other aspects, but also uh, want to point the fact that being in a museum, facing a work of art is all generates also an uh, 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 um, a better uh, emotion and uh, even can curate uh, and can be a kind of supportive care, can be understood as a supporting care, not replacing chemistry, uh, um, the uh, classical uh, medicine, but can also complete uh, this uh, approach. So uh, there is this whole uh, movement about caring museum, but here the like, museotherapy, like, the point is also to work with scientists and with doctors. Like, I, I used for the first time this word in a manifesto for a humanistic museum in 2016, and then like, we, uh, we uh, uh, put this uh, uh, word like, in uh, the Quebec, in Canada, uh, in the Office de la Langue Française, like, uh, the uh, official uh, office for the French language and now uh, it is uh, accepted. Museo therapy is a new concept that includes a set of practices that have in common the improvement and well-being of the audiences they serve in a museum context. Museo therapy is a set of practices for participants, visitors and patients whether they are accompanying or alone in the encounter with a work of art in the exhibition rooms or in the artistic creation in a workshop. So art does one good. Uh, so it's all about how we can rethink the museum for well-being, art therapy, and even a better health. So promoting inclusion, health, and wellness is all about the same uh, struggles, the same goals. And here you, we can see uh, the difference between a situation of exclusion to segregation, to integration, to inclusions. How donc, we can uh, support donc, this vision uh, for development of our therapies. And in fact, what is will be important is to establish the, some art and health committees through uh, museum mediators and for different partners. Partnership for socially committed institution. This is a key for the success of uh, such um, uh, program programming. Uh, in fact, uh, well, when uh, in uh, Montreal, the Montreal Museum of Fine Art, for example, we did work with 450 associations on a regular basis. But this. Uh, um, uh, methodology was always all about the participant, the audience, and uh, around this participant, we were co-creating with the researcher, with university, with uh, an association uh, responsible and uh, a mediator from the museum, where uh, co-creating a specific program around on this participant, this public. So it was not at all a ready to think. Like each program was especially precisely conceived for each uh, participant. Disadvantaged children, violence and social exclusion, school perseverance, etc., lit literacy, etc., etc. Research in co-creation with multiple partners helped to enlarge our vision and our perspective. So having a 360 perspective on our collections, for example, we made some posters, free posters, the art of being different. So all about the corporal diversity, the body diversity. We invented, we conceived this poster with different morphologies, thanks to our sculptures collection. Or for example, there was another example of poster with a Jim Dine uh, sculpture, uh, Heart and Soul Against Bullying, donc, uh, the museum bringing art to the school. So we were always talking uh, uh, on this aspect. Going quickly, uh, we were able to have uh, different pilot projects uh, on, about art and wellness, pilot pro research projects in Montreal, there was about uh, psychiatric programs, cardiac arrhythmia, autism spectrum, epilepsy, or uh, Alzheimer, or seniors and elders, breast cancer, immigrants, eating disorders, all those pilot programs were imagined and conceived with scientists thanks to our uh, special committee. 
We had also a special place, an art hive, where an uh, art therapist was uh, um, uh, there. Donc, uh, we hired donc, uh, an art uh, uh, therapist full time. So it was very new. Uh, it is a project you can see uh, with Concordia, the Department of Creative Art Therapy at Concordia University. So a uh, place made specifically for donc, uh, everybody. Uh, one of our most famous uh, program was the new medical uh, museum prescription. So in 2018, it was a world premiere. Uh, in it was imagined with the association of the francophone doctors in Canada. And so uh, each doctor had the possibility to give this prescription uh, to uh, the patient, to the client, and there were 4,000 potential doctors who participate to this uh, first uh, uh, pilot project. Uh, 50 prescriptions by doctor, one prescription for up to four persons, and everybody, every exhibition and collection was free. Uh, it has been an extraordinary success, and now Brussels, as well as Geneva, are doing the same following the uh, Montreal example. This is an, uh, a very nice uh, other example because we can see now how uh, this uh, trend is uh, spreading through many museums in France, in Orléans, giving blood in the galleries in the Museum of Foreign Arts in Orléans also okay, is imagined thanks to the city. Uh, wellness and well-being uh, is also about inclusion and diversity promotion. Of course, the gender diversity promotion. We had different program donc, uh, in Montreal with a naked tour, for example, around Mapperthorps, or donc, uh, a special uh, event uh, with a gay pride. Now, I would say that uh, with Habibi, Revolution of Love, donc, we are doing the same with this exhibition, which is open right now at the uh, IMA uh, here uh, with, uh, and it's all about the LGBT um, condition in the Arab world. Uh, for this uh, aspect of inclusion, we had another committee about art and togetherness, so they were with uh, specialists of intercultural issues, because it is what is important is not to think in terms of multiculturalism which divide, but really about interculturalism, how we make bridges between different people. So uh, uh, it is another example of uh, great um, statements thanks to the artist Angelica Das, for example, we made a human pantone in Montreal. So it's all about uh, visibility, giving more visibility in our collection, for example, about racialized uh, individuals uh, with uh, uh, revisiting our um, Old Masters collection or inviting a uh, new uh, artist from Canada, donc from the series domestic, for example. And of course, uh, being in North America, donc the uh, First Nations and indigenous uh, um, uh, challenge uh, donc, is very important. Uh, so uh, donc, uh, we did imagine all kind of uh, performance, inviting, for example, the designer Jean-Paul Gauthier with uh, the uh, indigenous artist Kent Monkman about cultural appropriation. And of course, now, uh, as I'm working at the Institute of the Arab World in Paris, donc, I work a lot about the interface dialogue, for example, here with the Jewish uh, Museum of Paris. And after, donc, trilogy of exhibitions about the Hajj, pilgrimage to the Mecca, Christians of Orient, or Jews of Orient, and we have very, very strong uh, expertise in this matter. For the end, I would recommend to uh, all of you to uh, read those uh, guides who are, which are online, uh, Cultures and Local Development, Maximizing the Impact. So uh, it is uh, made with the ICOM and OECD, and the Montreal Museum of Fine Art was uh, seat quoted uh, in uh, several times. And of course, the uh, meta uh, analysis uh, made by the World Health Organization in Europe, who is about health evidence network synthesis report, donc, uh, about how donc, the art improve health and well-being. 
thank you very much uh, for your attention. And uh, of course, as you can see, there are many, many missions uh, related to the museum in the 21st centuries and certainly a lot of work to do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Natalie. So many experiences, so, so, so many things to discuss. We should have the Co Museum in two days at least, but now we have to close. So we'll invite over. Thank you, Natalie, for being with us. It was, a, a, it was an honor to have you.